Today, we're gonna to learn some software developer specific tips for traveling on business. Hey guys, yes, I got a haircut. Yes, it's summer, it's hot. I've got an Iron Man race next week. I needed a haircut. So with this out of the way, I wanna to talk to you about traveling for business as a software developer. Now, like always, if you haven't been subscribed, please like, please subscribe. You can leave a comment down below if you have a tip for traveling as a software developer. So the good news is you're an engineer, not a salesman. So odds are you're only being sent away for three reasons. Either you're going to gather requirements, you need to fix a problem, or you're giving a demo or doing an install. So how do you dress as an engineer if you're going to a customer site to solve a problem or gather requirements? Well, it should still be business casual. And the good news is there's very simple ways, either as a man or as a woman, to dress business casual on a business trip. For men, stick with blues and khakis. I can go around the world in a business trip with two pairs of khaki slacks and three kinds of blue dress shirts. If you need a jacket, a navy jacket can get you from the boardroom to dinner with ease. If you have to bring a jacket, wear it on the plane so it doesn't get wrinkled. For shoes, I have one pair of brown leather shoes from Clark's. They're easy to slip on and off when you're at security and they look good at work for a casual software environment. For women, it's more about mixing black and white. Two white blouses and one black blouse paired with one pair of black pants and one skirt can give you a lot of different outfits. If you want to pop a color, try a scarf. For shoes, a pair of black flats from Clark's are perfect. If you absolutely have to wear heels, consider a pair of chunky heels. That way, if you're running for a train or trying to make a cab, you don't fall down. If you absolutely have to wear a jacket, a gray jacket will work with every single thing you're bringing and bring a gray cardigan as well, just in case you get cold in the office. Make sure you have some kind of ID, especially if you're gonna be traveling internationally, you're gonna need a passport, so you might as well apply for one now. If you live in the city like me and don't own a car, get a non-driver's ID. The last thing you want is for work to send you on a business trip and you can't go because you don't have ID. Bring a small laptop, iPad, or Chromebook for any kind of personal work or entertainment that you might wanna do while on your trip. I would not use a company computer for personal work or entertainment, but check your company's policy to make sure. I prefer a Chromebook because it costs 200 bucks. It does 90% of what you need it to do, and if you break it, who cares? You might wanna consider putting your cell phone in hotspot mode and using that instead of using public Wi-Fi at a hotel or at an airport. Using an unknown Wi-Fi hotspot can be a security risk, so check with your company before you travel to see what their rules and regulations are. Carry some simple toiletries and at least one pair of underwear and socks in your carry-on bag, just in case you have to check your roller bag. But that being said, never check your roller bag. Never check your roller bag. Unless work requires that you carry special tools or a firearm, never check your bag. In fact, I strongly suggest that you pay out of your own pocket to get special boarding if you can get an upgrade. That way you can be first on and first off your plane and not miss any connecting flights. When it comes to carry-ons, I prefer an expensive backpack, but a cheap roller bag. And here's why. You're going to be living out of your roller bag, but you're going to be working out of your carry-on backpack. So you don't want your backpack to fail at a customer site, especially since you're probably gonna be stuffing laptops and lunches and test equipment in there. If you're only going to be going on an occasional business trip, a cheap roller bag from Kohl's or Marshall's or Ross Dress for Less is fine. If you go on more frequent business trips, then maybe a more expensive bag would be a good investment. I haven't found that to be the case. One more thing. I tend to prefer bags with two wheels instead of four wheels, and there's a very simple reason why. You can tend to fit more stuff in a two-wheeled bag, and you lose space in a four-wheeled bag for the casters. Now, when I get on the plane, I like to dress like I'm forgettable. It's called the gray man principle. You don't want to stand out in any way. I try to look forgettable because it makes me less of a target when traveling. I wouldn't wear any clothes with my college name on it or a hat with a local sports team because it just increases the risk that someone's going to recognize you're not from around there. Someone could come up to you and start talking to you and that could make you a target for a robbery or a pickpocket when you're not looking. Now, if you can, get a second form of ID and put a second credit card in your carry-on bag. That way, if God forbid you do get robbed, you at least have a way to get home. Now, if you're running a car, get one of those hands-free air conditioning vent mounts for your cell phone and bring it with you. You're going to need your cell phone to navigate to the customer site, and I think just about every state has a hands-free cell phone law. So if you get pulled over on the way to the customer site, at the least, you're going to be late. At the most, you're going to get a ticket, and if court appearance required is checked, 
you're going to have to come back to that state on your own dime to go to court. So just bring a cell phone holder. For the customer site, make sure you bring one or two pens. The last thing you want to do is need office supplies when you're at the customer site. And pack some dry erase markers as well, at least blue, black, and maybe red. I've been to customer sites where you roll in, you're trying to explain a concept on a dry erase board, and all they have is yellow, and nobody can see anything. So be prepared. Now, when you're done the workday at the job site, don't be one of those people who make their per diem determine where they eat. Ask some of the people that you're working with where is a good place to eat for local food and try some new local experiences. This past week, I was just in Yuma, Arizona at a customer site, and I asked one of my Mexican-American coworkers where's the best place to go to get Mexican food. He took me to this place called the Chili Pepper in Yuma, Arizona, which was amazing. And then uh, the next day, I had my first In-N-Out burger. That experience never would have happened if I just went to McDonald's and went back to my hotel room. Now, most of the software development business trips I've been on have been three to five days. But if you're going to be staying longer, it might not be a bad idea to go to a supermarket, maybe get some healthy microwave meals and snacks. Finally, take pictures of every single receipt that you get and upload it to the cloud. Don't wait until the Monday when you come back to do your expense report. Try to do your expense report as you go. So that way you don't forget anything. Good luck on your next business trip. (laughs) 